Shalom, Yasharala. This is your brother Uriel coming back at you with another lesson. Uh, I'd like to start off by giving all honor, praise, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's all praises to the Father in the name of the only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, I was in bed last night laying down, and the Spirit just moved on me, um, you know, and, 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 uh, Put on my mind to to do a breakdown of Romans 12. You know the Spirit would do that from time to time. Uh, let me let me open up with John 14 and 26. Speaking about the Spirit, you know, because it it'll move on you like that sometimes. You know, and that's how we get our instruction. That's how we get our insight, our 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 drive. You know, so this is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26, and it reads, "But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost." Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. See, his word, the Most High's word, um, is stored in our memory drive by the Holy Spirit. This is how we get our understanding uh, by the obedience, okay, and then in the faith. But the Holy Spirit is what teaches us, it helps us to remember the scripture says. So let me get, um, Second Peter, Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-one. This is the book of Second Peter, chapter one, verse twenty-one, and it reads, "For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man." You see that? See the the word of the Most High didn't come by the will of man. It is not the will of man, and it reads, "But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost." You see that? See, the Most High will send his spirit over his, his children, over the prophets, to, to, to give the people a word, okay? This is, this is how, this is why these mighty men of God are coming out and speaking on these corners, okay? The spirit is moving them to do so, and this is how it was for me last night. I was just laying down, and the spirit uh, came over me and said, you know, get into Romans 12. So here I am, uh, bringing out a lesson on Romans 12 to edify the nation, so let's just get straight to it. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 1. Let's get into it, okay? And it reads, I beseech you, therefore, my Salakia, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see that? It says, this is our reasonable service to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Now, let me get uh, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, because this is, this is why we were created. This is why the Most High put us here. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, and it reads, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men. Not part, not some, not whenever we want it to be. It says this is the whole duty of men. This is the reason for our existence is to serve the Most High and His Son. So let me go back to Romans 12. Romans 12, verse 1 again. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a salakia, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. See, we have to dedicate our bodies to the Most High. We shouldn't be using our bodies to, to do wickedness, to go out whoring, to be doing drugs and, and being drunkards, okay? Killing and hurting our brothers, hurting our bodies. This isn't how we're supposed to conduct ourselves. So let me get 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, 19 through 20, and it reads, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, of the Most High? And ye are not your own. You see that? Paul is letting us know that our bodies don't belong to us, okay? We, we were given life by the Most High God, okay? Verse 20, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify the Most High in your body 
and in, in, in your spirit, which are the most high gods. He's saying that our body and our spirit both belong to the creator. He says we were bought with a price. How are we bought with a price? When Hamashiach Yahawashai was nailed to that cross and died for us. Okay, so we owe him our reasonable service. Okay, let me give 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, and it reads, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. You see that? We have to, we have to look at our bodies as a temple of the Holy Spirit of the Most High God. Okay, and if we see it that way, we'll treat our body as such, as holy, okay? That's, that's what it says. That's our reasonable service, to dedicate these bodies to the Most High, okay? Verse 17, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You see that? It says our body is holy, and it's the temple of the Most High God, okay? His spirit dwelleth in us. And so we need to treat our bodies as such. We shouldn't be uh, being glutton, gluttons and, 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 and overindulging and, and uh, terrible foods that will kill our bodies. Okay, This is why our people are dying of high blood pressure and diabetes and, and all these um, crazy diseases that are out there. Is because people are mistreating themselves and not glorifying their body uh, that is the temple of the Holy Spirit which is our reasonable service. We have to dedicate it to the Lord, which is our reasonable service, okay? So let's get to Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Salakia, Salakia. This is the book of Romans 12 and verse 2. And it reads, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. It's saying, don't get caught up with the worldly ways, okay? We have to be changed. We need to be converted, okay? We need to change from the darkness and come into the light, okay? Let me get uh, 1 John 2. 1 John chapter 2, 15 through 17. And it reads, Love not the world, Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So this is why we have to be, we have to put a, re, a renewing of our mind. Because the world is corrupt. And the love of the Father is not in the world. So we have to change. We have to be converted from that old man and become the new man. Okay, verse 16. For all that is in the world... The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You see that? All, all this wickedness that is of the, of the world is not of the Father. This is why we do not need to be part of the worldly manners, okay? Verse 17, 1 John 2 and 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You see that? If we are living according to the will of God, of the Most High God, the Bible says we will abide forever. See, that's kingdom like. That's how we have to walk, kingdom like. Okay, so let's go back to Romans 12. Romans 12 and verse 2 again. Let's read verse 2 again. It says, and be not conformed to this world. Why? Because the love of the Father it doesn't reside in the world. Okay, that's where wickedness resides. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We got to put on a new way of thinking, Yasharala. We got we got to think uh, uh, with the mind of Hamashiach Yahawashai. It says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So let me get Colossians two and eight. Bring out Colossians two verse eight. And it reads, beware lest any man, this is lucky, this is the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach Yehavashah. You see that? All these philosophies and vain deceit, these pagan holidays uh, that, that our people are destroyed by, okay? Uh, not observing the Sabbath, okay? 
eating all these abominable foods, okay? Men thinking they could be women and women thinking they could be men, okay? All these wicked philosophies that are being taught to our people, the rudiments of the world, and not after Hamashiach Yahawashai, okay? We have to be converted. We have to put on this new, this new mind. So, and it says, acceptable, perfect will of the Most High. So what is the will of the Most High? What is the will of God? So let me get Psalms 40 and 8. It's going to tell us what the will is. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. And it reads, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That is the perfect will of the Most High. That's the perfect will of God. The law, statutes, and commandments. That is what we need to apply to our life to be converted, to change, to put on this, re, this, uh, uh, this new way of thinking. Okay, That's what's going to ultimately change us is when we apply the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Hamashiach Yehavashai. So let me get Matthew 10. Let me get the book of Matthew chapter 10. Verse 38 through 39, and it reads, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. You see that? So, the, so Yahweh Shai is helping us to understand, if we want to live for the world, we're going to die. We're going to die in this world. But if we are willing to take up our cross and follow him, our life will be saved and we'll go into the kingdom. This is what he's saying. But if we want to live according to the rudiments and the philosophies of the world, if we don't want to have that renewing of the mind, we are, we're going to die with this wicked place. So let's, let's jump back to Romans now. Romans chapter 12. Romans 12 and verse 3. And it reads, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. You see, his children all have a measure of faith. But what are we what do we do with it? You know, we 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 have to walk out the will of the Lord. We we need to apply these law, statutes, and commandments. It says to not think of yourself higher than what you are. Okay? So let me get James 4 and 6. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 6. And it reads, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resist, resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. You see, we have to be humble if we expect to get this grace from the, from the Most High. We don't want to be lifted up in pride and thinking that we are better and mightier than what we are. Okay, let me read that again, James 4 and 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Okay, let me get Proverbs 16 and 18. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16. Verse 18, and it reads, Pride goeth before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. You see that? So it's saying that pride comes before the destruction of a person. When a person is lifted up in pride, the fall follows next. Okay? So we need to be humble. We want to walk humbly before the Most High God. Okay? Let me get 2 Timothy 1 and 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And it reads, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A sound mind. You see that? We must walk with a sound mind. The scripture says in Romans 12 and 3 to be sober, to have a sound mind. Let's go back to that real quick. Bring that out again, Romans 12 and 3. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3. It says, For I say, though the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. See, that's dealing with that pride. 
okay? We need to be humble. We have to be humble, like James said, okay? For God resists the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. It says, it reads, but to think soberly, like Timothy, like Paul wrote to Timothy, have that sound mind. When we're intoxicated or high on these drugs, we're not in a sound mind. So we need to be, we need to walk soberly, okay? We need to have a, a sound way of thinking, okay? It says, according as God have dealt to every man the measure of faith, okay? Let me get Philippians 2 and 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5, and it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach Yahawashai. You see that? That is how we need to walk. According to how, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, we need to walk according to how he walked. He is our example. Let me read that again, Philippians 2 and 5. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Hamashiach Yahawashai. Okay? That is how we have to walk. Yahawashai wasn't walking around being drunk all the time. Okay? He wasn't walking around lifted up in pride. Okay? We, that's how we have to walk. That's our example. We must be humble and sober. Okay? Sober. That doesn't mean you can't have a little wine, but not don't get drunk. You know? You know, don't be don't be high on these drugs. And more importantly, don't be drunk on the fornication of this world. The the wine, this this, this wine that these philosophies and the rudiments of this world. Have that sound mind with the sound doctrine of the word. Okay. So let's get Romans 12 and 4. This is the book of Romans, chapter 12, and verse 4. And it reads. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So this is talking about the, the whole body of Christ, as they call it, okay? The whole body. We're all members of this body. Okay, let me get John 10 and 30. Let me get John chapter 10 and verse 30. And it reads, I, this, now this is, this is Hamashiach Yahawashai speaking. John 10 and 30 says, I and my father are one, okay? Does that mean that they are exactly the same or do they share the same in essence? They are the same in essence because they are, they are distinctively uh, unique in their uh, position, in their office, but they share in essence the same character, okay? This is what Yahweh was saying, I and the father are one. They are like-minded which we should be like-minded with Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, and the Most High, okay? So let me get 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. It says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. So who the world calls Jesus Christ, okay? He is our head, okay? There, there is an authoritative order, and Christ is our head, Okay? And it reads, and the head of the woman is the man. So the scriptures is helping us to understand, but the head of the woman is the man. So you got Christ, Hamashiach Yahweshai, then you got the man, and then you got the woman. This is the authoritative order, okay? And the head of Christ is God, God the Father, Yahweh. See, the authoritative order, okay? So let's go back to Romans 12 and 4. Romans chapter 12, verse 4. Let's bring that out again. It says, For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. You see that? There is different authoritative positions, but we are, are all together. Okay, this is how the Lord, this is how the Most High designed it, okay? That we are all in this body, but different offices, okay? We're beginning with the Most High Yahweh, and then His Son, Hamashiach Yahawashai, and then the mighty men of the Lord, and then the woman, and then the children from that matter. And that is how, that is how the authoritative order uh, is set. Okay, I didn't write this. This is, this, is what, this is how the Most High has authorized this, okay? And it's to keep things in order. He's a God of order, okay? So let's get uh, Romans 12 and 5 now. It says, so we, being many, are one body in Yahawashai. 
and every one members one of another. So he's comparing us to a body. See, a body is all connected to each other, but every part is uniquely different and has its own purpose. And this is what Yahawashai is essentially saying. He says, we're all part of the same body, but there is different, uh, there's different functions in this body. There's different orders in this body. There's different offices in this body, but we are all connected. Okay, so let me get 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read a little bit here. This is verse 14 through 14. So we can get a little bit more understanding on, on what Paul's trying to help us to understand here. So 1 Corinthians 12 verses 4, and I'm going to read through 14. It says, now these are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And these are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. So Paul's telling us, look, there's different gifts for different people in this body. But we're all under Hamashiach Yahweh and all under the Most High God Yahweh. And that first beginning with Yahweh, then Yahweh Shai, then the man, then the woman. Okay, this is what it's saying. It says, um, verse 6, And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse, uh, diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And this is dealing with the gifts of the Holy Spirit how they're distributed to different members of the body. Not everyone carries the same characteristics in the body, but we are all part of this body nonetheless. Okay, verse 11. But all these work if that one in the self-same spirit. You see that? It's saying that all these gifts that are given to each individual are working all according to one spirit through the Most High Yahweh, through the Most High Yahweh and His Son Yahweh Shai, and we're all tied in like that. We're all connected. It says, but verse 11 again, but all these work of that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will, as the spirit wills. He's going to give um, a gift to each individual as, as the Most High instructs him to. Okay. Verse 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. See, Paul is trying to help us understand that Christ is our head, but we're all in this body together. Okay? We're all in this body together with many parts. Okay? Verse 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized in, into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. Now, this is dealing with the southern kingdom of Israel and the northern kingdom of Israel. He's saying that we are all brothers and sisters in this body with Christ being the head and, and Yahweh being the head overall. Okay. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. See, he's using the analogy of a body to help us to understand that a body has many parts. Okay but all connected. And that is how uh, the church of God is. We are all one body in Christ, Hamashiach Yahweh under Yahweh. Okay. Hope everyone got that edification with that. So let's move on to Romans uh, 12 and 5. Let's get Romans chapter 12 and verse 5. It says, um, oh, Salaki, Salaki, verse uh, 6. It says, Having then... Gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Verse 7, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Okay, let me read verse 6 and 7 again. It says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. So we all have different gifts according to the Spirit says, whether prophecy, that's one, 
let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, okay? Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, okay? So let me give 1 Peter 4 and 11. Let me get a little bit of understanding. 1 Peter 4 and 11, and it reads, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. And any, if any man minister, let him do, do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Hamashiach Yehoshai, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So this is what it's talking about in, in, in Romans 12, 6, and 7, that the Most High is going to give us as, as He wills, as the Spirit um as the Spirit wills it. So let me read 1 Peter 4 and 11 again. It says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. You see that? The Most High God has to give us this ability, these gifts. Okay, this, this is what it's talking about. Let's jump back to Romans. Romans 12. And let's read 6 and 7 again. Romans 12, verse 6 and 7. It says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. You see that? As given to us, because the Most High has to give us this ability. It says, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, because the Lord, the Most High God, has to give it to us. He has to give every man according to the proportion of faith that he wills. Okay? It says, verse 7, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching. Because the Spirit has to teach us, okay, on the Indian team. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So it's telling us that we have to be in, we have to be diligent in this word. We need to show ourselves approved by our studies. Okay, not every man uh, is going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a ten year doctrine in, in in this word overnight. Okay, you have to study. Okay, and and the Most High is going to give every individual his portion in his due time. Okay. But we all have a job to do in this body, okay? This is, this is the understanding of what Paul is trying to help us to get, is that, yes, you should be teaching. Yes, you should be ministering. Yes, you should be prophesying. But the Most High God is going to give us these instructions. He's going to give us the knowledge. He's going to give us the wisdom. And we are going to get in this word and study. And this is how we will develop each person according to the proportion that the Most High gives him, okay? Let's jump back to Romans. Romans chapter 12, and let's move on to verse 8 now. And it reads, it says, Romans 12 and 8, it says, For he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So now this is, Paul is saying, look, when we teach, when we minister, when we prophesy, that when, when we are helping out our brothers and sisters, there are certain attributes about going to, about it. That how, how do we do this? What's the character, uh, characteristics of helping and teaching and prophesying? He's saying, when you, he says, or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Okay, so let's get uh, Hebrews 10. Let's get the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 through 25. And it reads, And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. This is how we exhort one another. Okay, this is that exhortation that Paul is saying. Let me read this again. Hebrews 10 and 24 it says, let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Okay, we need to teach our brothers unto good works, our sisters unto good works. Verse 25, Hebrews 10 and 25, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, 
but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. What day is that? The day of the Lord, okay? When all this wicked kingdom is going down, it says that we need to be exhorting one another, lifting one another up in this truth, reproving one another, helping our brothers and sisters to understand what they're doing wrong, how to correct it, how to walk according to the faith and, and be obedient uh, uh, to the Most High, keeping his law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of his son, Yahabashai. Okay, so let's jump back to Romans. Let's bring that out again, Romans 12 and 8. Let's read it one more time. Romans 12, verse 8 says, Or he that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. Okay, let him do it with simplicity. So let's get Romans 15 and 4. Romans 15, verse 4. It says, for whatsoever things are written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So this word that is given to us is for our learning. This is how we are going to exhort our brothers and sisters and build them up, is by teaching them of this word of the Most High God and His Son. That is how we are going to do this, right? Let me get Judith 8 and 24. Okay, Judith chapter 8, verse 24. Judith 8, verse 24, and it reads, Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. You see, for us that are walking in the light, that are walking in the spirit, we have to be an example. That is our greatest ministry. That is how we will best... Uh, exhort our brothers and sisters is by our own walk we can tell them all day long how to do this or that but if we're not doing it ourselves what good is it that's being hypocritical so we have to let our light shine okay we have to let our light shine yasharala so let me get matthew 5 and 16 we'll bring that out matter of fact matthew 5 verse 16 let's just get it Matthew 5 and 16, and it reads, this is Hamashiach Yehavashai. He says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. This is how we'll exhort them, okay? By letting them see our good works. Let them, letting them uh, see the example on how they should walk so that they will glorify the Father which is in heaven, okay? This is what the scriptures is telling us to do. We have to be a living example on how to follow the Most High and His Son. This is key. Now, let me get 2 Corinthians 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 7 through 9, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9, and it, and it reads, By the word of truth. By the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live as chastened and not killed. I'm going to read through verse 10. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Okay. Salakia, Salakia, Israel, Salakia. Just trying to let me get First Corinthians six. That's where I want it. Salakia. Salakia, Yasharala. First Corinthians six and nine uh, and ten, because it's talking about some of the attributes of these people um, that aren't going to make it. So. We have to live according to the Spirit. We don't want to be living as a bad example. And these are some bad examples. It says, 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. See, these are attributes, these are characteristics on how we should not live, okay? This is a bad example. 
And we have so many of our brothers and sisters walking around living just like this. We do not want to walk in this manner. The Bible says that if we live this way, we will not inherit the kingdom. So Judith chapter 8 and verse 24 says, our brother's hearts depend on us. So if we're living in this manner, let me read it again. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10 says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. That is a bad example to our brothers and sisters. Okay, That is not how we exhort them. We have to be an example so that they can see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven, just like Hamashiach Yahawashai uh, uh, told us. So we, 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 we need to live according to the Spirit. Okay, now let's go back to Romans 12 and 8 one more time. One more time. Let's get Romans 12 and 8 one more time. It says, Or he that exhorteth or on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. So let me give Colossians 3 and 23. Book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And it says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. I'm going to read verse 24. Knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Hamashiach Yahawashai. You see that? You see that? So this, this is how we need to conduct ourselves, doing everything in honor of Hamashiach Yahawashai, uh, giving thanks to the Father by him, as the scriptures uh, describe. So let's move on now, okay? Let's get... um. Let's get Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. It says, let, Romans 12 verse 9, it says, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good, dissimulation. Let's look that up, okay, dissimulation. Let's look up what dissimulation, the definition of it is. It says, dissimulation, concealment of one's thoughts, feelings, or character, pre pretense. Okay? Let's look up the synonyms. It says, misrepresentation, deceit, dishonesty, duplicity, lying, guile, sub subterfuge, whatever that word is. Feigning, falsification, shamming, faking, bluff, bluffing, counterfeiting, posturing, hypocrisy, double dealing, concealment, concealing, masking, disguising, hiding, veiling, shrouding. You see that? Just being fake. That's what it's saying. Being lying, deceitful. So let's go back to it. Romans 12 and 9. It says, let love be without dissimulation. It's basically saying... Don't be fake about it. When you, when we're commanded to love our brothers and sisters, it means to be sincere about it. We don't want to be fake about it. Okay? It says, let love be without dissimulation. Okay? Don't be false. Don't deceive with it. It says, abhor that which is evil. Abhor means to hate. It says, hate that which is evil. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Okay, let's get John 15 and 12. John 15, verse 12. And it reads, This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. This is Hamashiach Yehavashai. It's saying to love one another. We don't want to do that with dissimulation. Okay, with being fake about it. We want to be sincere in our love towards each other. Okay? And how do we love? Let's get that real quick. 
Because some people's understanding of love is, is just it's this feeling, this warm feeling that I have inside. But what does, what, what, does, what does the scripture say what love is? It says 1 John 5 and 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. That is love. That is how we demonstrate love one to another is by upholding the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith of Yahweh Shai. Okay, let's go back to Romans 12 and 9 again. Romans 12, verse 9. Romans 12, verse 9. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. See, it says let our love for one another be genuine. Let it be sincere. Okay, we don't, we don't want to be faking the funk as they call it. We want our love towards one another to be valid, okay? Be sincere, be genuine, all right? It says, abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. So let's get Amos 5. Let's go to the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. And it reads, this is the book of Amos 5, 14 and 15. Seek good and not evil that ye may live. You see that? That we may live. If we seek good, the scriptures are saying we will live. Okay? Let me read that again. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Verse 15. Hate the evil. That's that abhor. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. And it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So this is dealing with Israel. It's saying, look, this is how we have to deal with each other. We don't we, we need to learn to hate the evil and to love the good. OK, I always tell people all the time, you know, I know we've been conditioned in this wicked world to, to, to love and like things that aren't good for us. But we have to put on a renewing of our mind. We must be born again. We have to change. We have to look at things differently. Okay, We have to love what's good and hate what's evil. Okay, so let's get to, let's go back to Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, and let's get verse 10. And it reads, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. Let me read that again. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. See, our people, we have a lot of disdain in our eyes towards one another. It's one of the curses that the, that the Most High said would be on us, is that we would have an evil eye towards our brother. Okay? But we have to change that. We need, we need to look at our brothers and sisters with genuine, sincere love. Okay, and consider them before we consider ourselves, because that's what the Son of the Most High did. He came and died for us. That's love. That is how we should be thinking towards our brothers and sisters. We should be putting our life on the line for them. Okay, going out and waking them up. Okay, reproving them, changing their life. Okay, so let me get Hebrews thirteen and one. Book of Hebrews. Chapter 13 and 1. And it reads, Let brotherly love continue. Okay? It's a short verse, but it's powerful. Let brotherly love continue. See? We have to, we have to stay with this, uh, uh, this love that the Most High and His Son told us to, to live by. Okay? We, we really have to look out for one another and, and, and uphold these law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, let's get 1 John 4, 7. Let me get 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Okay, this is the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, and it reads, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that love, loveth is born of God and knoweth God. See that? It says that if we love each other, then, then, then we are born of God. We are born of the Most High God, Yahweh. Okay, let me jump down to verse 11. It says, 1 John 4, verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, 
we ought also to love one another. See that? We got to stop all this hate. We, we really need to start looking out for one, each other, uh, one another's needs and, and, and considering our brother and sister before ourselves. Okay? Yahweh Shah is our example. That is how we must conduct ourselves. Okay? Because there's too much hate in our nation. Too much hate. And it's destroying our people. All this murder and violence and uh, divorce and, 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 and fatherless children. It's just hate. Just hate, and we need to knock that off. We need to come back to the Most High and His Son and listen to what they're telling us to do. Okay, let me get Romans 12 and 11. Let's go back to Romans 12. This is going to be a two-part series, Yasharala. So, you know, we're going to do the other half of this on the next segment. So this is Romans 12 and verse 11. And it reads, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Let's read that again. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Let me get 2 Timothy 2 and 15 again. We just brought that out, but let's bring it out again. 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We might have brought out 1 Peter 4 and 11 earlier. Let me read that again. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see? Now let's go back to Romans again. Romans 12 and 11 one more time. Not slothful, this is Romans 12 and 11, not slothful in business. What did Timothy, what did Paul tell Timothy? Study, study to show thyself approved. A workman, okay? Not being ashamed of this gospel, okay? We, we need to be in this word. We need to be diligently studying, okay? Let's read that again, verse 11. Not slothful in business. Fervent in spirit and serving the Lord. This is this is how we need to serve. We need to stay diligent in this service to Him. It is our duty, okay, to keep these commandments. Okay, we need to stay in this word. We need we need to stay in this word, day in day out. This is this is what's gonna preserve our life. His law, statutes, commandments, and the faith. Okay, let me get a uh, Proverbs sixteen and three. Get Proverbs 16 and 3. Proverbs, this is the book of Proverbs, uh, chapter 16, verse 3. It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. You see that? We got to commit everything we do unto Him, and He's going to establish our thoughts. He's going to uh, direct the things that we're thinking. Okay? That's that Spirit speaking to us. We need to commit ourselves to the to the service of the Most High and to His Son Yahweh Shai. Okay, and it says, it says, "Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established." See, if we commit our service to Him, He's going to help us think accordingly. He's going to line us up in this Word. He's going to speak to our spirit. Okay, this this is important. You know, we really, we really need to understand that if we're being slothful in our, in our studies, if we're being slothful in doing the work of the Most High, okay, we're going to fall off, okay? One, one minute you got a brother on fire, and then the next minute he, he's back in the world. Why? Because he stopped studying. He stopped doing the service of the Lord, okay? You got to stay with it. You got to stay with it, okay? Let's get uh, Haggai chapter 1. Let me get Haggai chapter 1, and uh, I'm going to do a little reading here. This is going to be verse 2 through 10, Haggai 1, 2 through 10. Speaking to our people so much today, it says, Thus speaketh the Most High of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. You see, they're saying, It's not time to do the Lord's service. It's not time to go build for the Lord, to, to, to put His church together. This is, this is what the people are saying. We got all day long, dude. I'll do that when I'm 75. That's wicked as hell, okay? We need to do it and do it now. Verse 3, 
Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Haggai is saying, look, you, you, you concerned about doing your nine to five, you concerned about dealing with your worldly relationships, all that's important to you, your car, all that's important to you, but doing the work of the Lord, you're going to leave that waste? This is what he's saying. He's saying, hold on a second. You're going to do all this other stuff and leave the Lord's work waste. Verse 4, it says, let me read that again. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lie waste? And this house lie waste? The Lord's house? That should be key. That should be first and foremost. Okay, verse 5. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. See, the Mosai is saying, look, you got it backwards. You're so concerned with these worldly activities, your house, your car, your wife, your children, all that stuff should be secondary to serving the Lord. Okay, verse, verse 6. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink. But ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe, but ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. He's saying, look, all this stuff that you're doing is in vain. If you're not doing it for the Lord, it's in vain. It's going to come to nothing. You're putting your, you're putting your money into a pocket full of holes. You're so focused on building your own house that you're neglecting building for the Lord doing the service of the Most High, getting out there and waking up your brothers and sisters, doing your diligent studies, making sure you pray three or more times a day, okay? Making sure you attend all the feast days, studies, okay? Honoring the Sabbath, doing your, your due diligence to the service of the Most High and His Son. He's saying you got it backwards. You're putting your money in a pocket full of holes. Let's read verse 7. It says, Haggai chapter 1, verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. The Most High said, look, understand some things. You, 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 you're doing this backwards. You're out of course right now. Wake up and get it right. It says, verse 8, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. He blew upon it, that destruction. Everyone knows the story about the three little three little pigs with the big bad wolf. He huffed and he puffed and he blew the houses down. That's where they got this. They got that story from right here in the book of Haggai. Let me read verse 9 again. It says, Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why? saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste. And ye run every man into his own house. So he's saying, look, why did I blow upon it? Why did I bring, bring destruction, calamity, trials and tribulations your way? Because you decide to not take the service of the Lord serious. You are more concerned with building your house, okay? Doing the worldly activities to where you're neglecting building for the Lord. Waking up your brothers and sisters. Doing the work. He said, I'm going to blow your house down. Everything that you're putting in your pocket is in a pocket full of holes, the Bible says. If, see, that's why we got to get it right, Yasharala. We got we to gotta do the service of the Lord because that is our duty. That is why we were created, to keep the commandments of the Most High God and to have the faith in His Son. Verse 10, Haggai 1 and 10. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. He's saying if you don't want to do the service of the Lord, he's saying you're not going to be fruitful. It's not going to produce. See, Satan might give you a deception of a blessing, a deceived notion of a blessing, but that's all coming to nothing. True blessings come from the Most High and His Son. Okay, he's saying he's going to stay the do. You're not going to prosper and be fruitful if you're not willing to serve Him. Okay, let's go back to... Romans 12, and we're going to probably close after this one and follow up on this. 
Romans 12 and 11 again. So let's, let's get Romans 12 and 11 again. It says, Romans 12 and 11, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, spirit serving the Lord. We got we to gotta serve the Lord. We got to serve the Most High. Okay, we got to walk according to the faith of his son and, and do the service. Okay, we got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments and, and build for the Lord. Let me get 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. And it reads, For even when ye were with you, when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Let me read that again, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Now let me go back to Romans 12 and 11 again. Romans 12 verse 11 says, Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. This is a two-way meaning. It's building for the Lord and doing literal work here. Okay? Because if we're not willing to, to, to work to feed our families, the Bible says we shouldn't eat. If we're going to be lazy, we shouldn't eat. Okay, This is a two-way meaning. We must build for the Lord, we must serve the Lord, and we must do literal, actual work. Okay, Now, we, we, we know we're in our captivity, and, and, and we're, under, we're under our oppressor. Okay, We got ourselves here, though. Okay, And the Most High says, look, you're going to have to do some things. We got a job to do. So the Bible's, the Bible's helping us to know that we have to do the service of the Lord and we need to do, uh, uh, we got to feed our families. We got to work. We got to work. And, and let's, uh, let's get one more. I'm going to get Colossians 3 and 17 and we're going to close and come back on another segment to finish this out. Colossians 3 verse 17. Because we, we have to serve, we have to serve the Most High and His Son. Colossians 3, 17, and it reads, And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Hamashiach Yahawashai, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let me read that again. I, you know, we bring this out all the time, but it, it's, it's so profound. Colossians 3, 17, And whatsoever ye do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Hamashiach Yahawashai, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. So the scripture says, no matter what we do, we have to do it all in honor of the Father and his Son. Okay? If we can stay with that focus, we are going to stay sincere, genuine, driven, diligent, okay? Attributes that we should have, okay? Walking, walking kingdom life, okay? We got a job to do, Yasharala. So... With that, um, we're gonna. I'm, I'm gonna finish up uh, the second part of Romans 12 breakdown on the next segment. So you know, um, I think we're about an hour in at this point. So you know, we we we're gonna end it here on Romans 12 and 11, and I'll see you guys next time. With that, I'd like to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yasharala, Shalom.